Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My voice sounds weird because I'm sick. I'll try to, I don't know, I'll try to make it sound better, but I'm making no guarantees. This video is not intended for children under the age of 13 years old, and if the comments are set up, it's because YouTube did it, not me. Welcome to today's My Little Pony video. And just for, um, I don't know, to avoid demonetization, I'm gonna say a cuss word. Fuck, yeah, that, yeah, now I can't, not demonetization, but kid marking. Anyway. So, I'm going to talk about the first half of season one, because the f talking about the whole season would be too long for me right now. <laughs> and the f specifically those first 13 episodes, and I'm going to be ranking them, and then what it does for the series as a whole. I'm going to talk about what it does well. It establishes the main six personalities and how they interact with one another. It really, it goes, and we learn quite a bit about the characters in these first few episodes and how they see the world. And the traditions of Ponyville, the setting as well as a few things like, I'd say that it's very character focused, almost to a detriment actually. I like their main character so much. I'd say that's actually one of the flaws. And two of the characters, they characterize in a way that's slightly less appealing, so people end up hating them. Sorry, I was gonna say they don't do the greatest job with Applejack and Rainbow Dash, but does not bother me and it never did. The world building, it does actually pretty okay, contrary to popular belief. I like how they handled it for the most part, the dragons, and the zebras were pretty okay in their handling. I'd say they also introduced some other things like Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, which is just a fun little just a fun little thing to include. Lore-wise, I think it's a nice tidbit. And they also cover they do particularly one group pretty badly though, the Griffins. We only see one, and she's really awful. <laughs> And she's not awful throughout the rest of the series. We get it. We see Griffinstone ladder in the latter half of the series, and it's not that bad, honestly. I like how they did that far better there. But there's really this ponies are best mentality going. So I think that Griffin the the Griffin episode was pretty bad. Probably like the worst of the first season, and probably the worst of the first five seasons. When it comes to, I'm gonna be going into some episode analysis now. The first two episodes. I'm gonna start here because it's the beginning, and also because it's the best. Of the, ser of the first half of this series, I believe. So, episode one establishes a little bit of lore about the rulers of Equestria early on, and we all it also introduces us all our main characters and their different ways of interacting in a really, really good way. So basically, it's about Twilight Sparkle, the true main character, but she's like the main, main one, meeting her friends, Applejack, Rarity... Pinkie Pie, and wow, I'm Fluttersai. I'm like blanking on somebody's name. Rainbow Das, I guess. Yeah, and how? And she has like basically foretold like a situation where a deity that's been trapped in the moon's gonna escape. And Celestia's so like, "You should go make friends." And she's like, "I don't want to make friends." <laughs> it's a little rambly, I know. And she finds out like the power of friendship while meeting all of them, and I feel like Rainbow Dash in particular was the weakest in the pilot characterization, she was the weakest. I think Applejack and Pinky were the strongest next to Twilight when I look back on this. Like, absolutely. But Rainbow Dash was definitely, and they used, they introduced the elements of harmony as you're seeing here, which they should have done more with in the first season, as well as Nightmare Moon in general as a villain they didn't do much with, but they were establishing stuff, and maybe it was just too dark to do more with her. They reform her into Luna using the elements of harmony, which, albeit isn't the best message, they tend to go back on the whole magic good, magic to people good, or whatever thing, but it wasn't that bad to me. I would say it's the best episodes from this entire season, and not just this batch. Look Before You Sleep is another one. So look... I didn't like this much growing up when I was in the target demographic, but upon rewatching it, I like how it narrows in on certain characters. I did find that was a bit janky in the animation, but like, I actually appreciate that in hindsight. I like that it had a tighter character focus and didn't have all the main six up front all the time. Like, they all sew up, but it really gives you better insight of Rarity and Applejack specifically. And I think that's really a great choice they made when writing that. Just narrowing that focus a bit, because they had a pro. The early seasons didn't let that happen much. It's definitely the second best of this batch, next to ra Winter Wrap Up. This mu this episode establishes more of the lore of Ponyville, 
where they have they wrap up the holidays using old fashioned earth pony like methods, but they let all the others help in different ways, like unicorns and pegasi are still useful. They don't leave anybody out, although they are anti magic about it, which is a definitely a cultural difference between Twilight's home and which is Canterlot and Ponyville. Another thing is it has fantastic music, like the best music of any episode I can imagine. I just love it. The fourth overall episode, Boastbusters. I like this episode because it introduces Trixie and sees a very interesting character, lover or hater. Uh, She's a bit contentious in the fandom, but we also see how they react to, like, boasters, if you know what I mean. Like, people who overblow their accomplishments. And, like, Trixie says that she's defeated an Ursa Major when she's faced with an Ursa Minor, so he can't take it out. And then Twilight uses her magic, superior magic skills to get the Ursa Minor back to its mama, Ursa Major, which was actually kind of cute to me, I'm not gonna lie. The next episode is Call of the Cutie, episode 12. I liked this one quite a bit because it establishes some peripheral characters that end up becoming a little more important as the series goes on, I feel like. I know some people hate the CMC, but I loved their episodes when I was younger because it helped. It was nice to get some time away from our main characters like Twilight and the others and focus on someone else. And I could also... And I like that we get a little bit more of a way cutie mark lore established here, even if it's a bit inconsistent La- and towards the latter end of the series, and like, G5 does a lot of stuff that makes this kind of confusing. So yeah, I like that. There's Dragon High episode 7. I like this one pretty much because it, it shows all the main characters and their different pros, like all the different good things about them. And it also gives Buttersai her time to sign when because a dragon's, like, gonna overshadow the town and, like, the equestria and smoke for, like, a hundred years if they don't wake it up and tell it to go. And Fluttersai puts her hoof down and she gets, and, like, talks to it. And we also get a little more dragon stuff, so that's cool. Swarm of the Century. This one's just super fun because we get to see, um, another Fluttersai-centered one. But this house is better for Pinky as one... They're welcoming Princess Celestia and they're getting the town ready, but Fluttersai, as you just saw, found a parasprite little parasite in the forest. And these things multiply if they eat or do anything, really. And it starts basically destroying everything and bothering people after Twilight performs a spell so they'll stop eating all their food so they won't have a famine in Equestria. And Pinkie Pie knows what to do, but they're not taking her seriously, which is why this is not, this is placed lower, because it's a bit frustrating to see that someone who knows what they're doing won't explain themselves and that they won't take her seriously. But Celestia sees this and thinks they arranged to parade of Paris rights. He doesn't even know what they are. So it's like, damn. Oh, they're fun. Also, Sikora's in this. I said mentioned that Sikora's in this episode, I think. Yeah. The Ticket Master, episode three. I, this one's very nostalgic because it's like one of the first three, and it's basically about Twilight getting two tickets to the Grand Galloping Gallop so she can only invite one friend. Spike doesn't want to go, so she has to pick between five ponies. And when she's having us issue picking, uh, all of her friends are getting kind of overbearing, and like, I used to pick me, and she gets mad at Rainbow Dash because he like literally sets a storm on them. Flutterstar tries her best, but like, she's not doing anything all that egregious, so it's, it doesn't bother me. And basically, I like that this sets up for the finale. That's what this episode does pretty well. Bridal Gossip, episode 9. So this one is about... This is actually where we are introduced to Zakara, and I like that quite a bit. She hasn't... And basically, they get stuck in, like, these weird blue things, and Zakara tells them not to, and they think, like, she's cursed or something, and that she cursed them. When, uh... Because they're all hiding from her, and they don't know what they are what uh see us and she ends up helping them and they learn a little bit i mean a little bit about how curses work in the everfree forest which is really cool and we learn a little bit about zebras and it introduces something that apple bloom has carried through her character which is potion making and i think that's cool also the core is just a really cool character i wish they'd been a little less racist in this episode but you know it's okay apple buck season so Apple Buck season is a little lower down because it's kind it's a little bit of a character assassination on Applejack's part. In fact, a lot of the next one is too. Basically, 
her brother has an injured back, so she has to harvest all the apples alone. None of her family members can help because they're all harvesting on their own farms. And she it refuses to let her friends help because she thinks she can do it by herself. And she gets tired and she overcommits to things and, like, poisons the city. And I just don't like how it portrays Applejack as much, so it's, like, close to the bottom of the list at 10th. Fall Weather Friends. This one is placed here because of two separate factors. It shouldn't be episode 13 in my head because this shouldn't take place before winter wrap-up. And it's not very good to the characters of Applejack and Rainbow Das. It's quite... It's kind of a bit of a character assassination on their part. And it's a bit of a dramatic way, but it could have done better. But I do like the fall scenery of the episode, and the message overall is okay. I just don't like- it's a bad mid-season finale, like, for what it is. This sort of winter wrap-up, or literally anything else, could have been a better one. And they hardly learn their lesson by the end of the episode. <laughs> they still- I mean, I think season four, or- and even nine, they still have the same issues going with these two characters. So yeah, it's okay overall. Griffin the Brissoff, the worst episode of the first half of the season for a multitude of reasons. It poorly handles the subject of bullying when Rainbow Dash's friend Gilda comes to Ponyville. Sorry, my chickens are loud and my animals. And sees like, hates on Pinky for being like happy and also the fact that Rainbow Dash now has other friends. And it does a bad job characterizing other pony species, which is a bit of an issue with these latter half episodes. And Pinky ends up throwing a party for Gilda to, so, to prank her a bit because she kept getting pranked by Gilda so she'd go away, which enrages Gilda, and it shows it's just kind of unreasonable. They actually do a better job with this character in the later seasons, but what they do here is pretty bad, honestly, when it comes to the series as a whole. What they do with the Griffins in general until about... I don't know, I think season three. Well, thanks for watching this part, but I'm gonna go into a few, a little bit more, because I have some time. I want to mention this. I, I love the first season because I watched it when I was a kid. This is, I only remember a few of my first times because I was so young watching it. And it had a, a few flaws like the animation, but it was still overall really good. So even if I'm a little negative, I had to in placing this, so sorry. All that being said, bye.